Well, first things first, uh, I got the, there's some absolutely horrendous news here. Uh, Uh-oh. Horrific news. No, uh, terrific news. That's what oh. I meant to say. Yeah, Ter- that's the terrific, opposite. Terrific news. Uh, Loch Ness Monster plausible after fossil, fossil discovery. How about that, people? Uh, that's good news. Oh, yes. The Loch Ness Monster, after all these years... It may be a plausible creature that's out there. So the discovery that some plesiosaurs could have lived in freshwater has reignited the debate on old Nessie in the Loch Ness over there in Scotland. I think that's where it's, where it's at. I think it's in Scotland. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Big time. Eating yeah. haggis or whatever the fuck they eat over there. I think they do eat haggis. That's all they eat. <laughs> Uh, the quintessential Loch Ness monster sighting is typically that of a large, long neck creature that appears uh, that appears as a head and neck, or in a series of bumps, protruding from the water. Over the years, this has led some to speculate that the creature could be a plesiosaur, a type of prehistoric aquatic reptile, as depicted by the oft photographed model that can be found outside the Loch Ness exhibit uh, exhibition center at the Drumadrox on the western shore of the lock. Now, uh, I believe, uh, was it uh, Alistair Crawley? He had he had a residence right near the lock, and it is rumored that he opened up uh, a portal using magic, uh, sex magic maybe, and that uh, then later, uh, Jimmy Page of uh, Led Zeppelin, he bought that house to do his own kind of magic in there. And now I, th- I, th- I think the last time we heard it was up for sale a few years ago and it's probably in the hands of a new owner. So we'll see. Well, I'll continue on here. While many have played down uh, this possibility of Loch Ness Monster, uh, not least because plesi- plesiosaurs died out millions of years ago and lived in the ocean, a new fossil discovery has recently added some renewed credence to the theory by suggesting that some plesiosaurs, plesiosauri, actually lived in fresh water. Researchers at the University of Bath recently discovered the fossil remains of several small plesiosaurs that lived in a river system 100 million years ago in what is now the Sahara Desert. The find uh, indicates that these creatures lived in fresh water alongside crocodiles, fish, turtles, and dozens of other species. Uh, Quote, we don't really know why the plesiosaurs, why the plesiosaurs are in fresh water. Uh, it's a bit controversial, but who's to say that because we paleontologists have always called them a marine reptile that they lived in the sea too. Lots of marine uh, lineages invaded fresh water. So there you go. Uh, the theory that the Loch Ness Monster could be plausible just got a little bit more oomph to it uh, through this fossil find. Well, I saw the Loch Ness Monster in my toilet this morning. Okay. I mean, that's just as believable. Yeah. Well, I mean, it would be an incredibly small uh, Loch Ness Monster in a toilet. You think about how small that thing would have to be and then to, to function. Uh, I don't know. I don't think that's a plausible thing. But And if know. it was an ocean thing, the, the idea that they're going to go, uh, but yeah, there was maybe some freshwater ones. Like, I don't think that those kind of species do that. Do they? I, I, this, like you this can't is, throw a saltwater creature into a freshwater, or, or maybe you can. I don't know how. I, th- I think there are certain types of fish and mammals that can swim both in salt and fresh, but I think it's a very limited number. Uh, but I don't, I don't know for certain. Uh, we would need to talk to a marine biologist, and we just do not have one. We don't know any marine biologists, so. It would be great if we did. But we don't. Stop it. I was a marine biologist. (laughs) I do have some more ocean news for you, Joe, if you like the ocean news. I love the ocean. I want to be a marine biologist. Matthew McConaughey wants to be a marine biologist. That's okay. He can do it. He's got McConaughey money. Do you think he ever played a marine biologist in any of the movies he's ever acted in? I don't think he has. I don't know. Name one. Risky business. He wasn't even in risky business. 
That was Tom Best Cruise times at Ridgemont High. He wasn't even in that movie either. I think it was something mistaken. like that one. He, uh, no. Oh, he was in. Um, oh it's God! All right, it? all right, all right. Yeah, he was in that. All right, all right, all right movie. I think what? that was the name of it. Wasn't that uh, Dazed and Confused? That's the one. Yes. I still he, haven't seen that. You haven't seen that movie? Wasn't that a link letter movie too? I have no idea. It's. I mean, it's uh, at this point could probably considered a, a a classic. It's okay. I watched it a few years ago. I'm okay with it. You think it, how how quickly do you think it could get me in bed, like to sleep? Oh, it'll put you to bed in like ten minutes. Okay, cool. I'm gonna yeah. put that one on the roster here. Yeah. Well, let's uh, get on over to this story over here, and we'll talk about some more ocean news. <laughs> People like the ocean. You know, we're talking more about the ocean, not just because of the news. Uh, because we like it, and that's where I think a, a good majority of these aliens, the UFOs, that's where they go to hide. That's where they go to hang out. Sure. Uh, that's the going theory. But uh, this uh, this headline over here, we got it. Let's bring this up on screen. There it is. Uh, they look almost human-made. The uh, Noah finds weird lines of holes in mid-Atlantic floor. That's some good news on that front. So what we're looking at here on screen uh, are a series of dashes, but they're holes. They're just kind of like longer rectangular holes, and they're almost like perfectly cut out on mm -hmm. the ocean floor, and it's uh, very intriguing. Uh, scientists exploring the submerged mountain range of the Mid-Atlantic stumbled onto something they can't explain. Uh, an organized series of holes punched into the floor of the Atlantic. The discovery was made on Saturday, this past Saturday, the 23rd, and photos show the dots connected into nearly straight lines or trails or designs. Uh, NOAA uh, Ocean Exploration isn't sure how to explain it yet. Uh, quote, we observed several of these sublinear sets of holes in the sediment. These holes have been previously reported from the region, but their origins remain a mystery. So, okay, I'm looking at these holes. And they look like they're freshly made. Like, you'd imagine with all the sediment, all the fish swimming around there, all the, the, the kind of stuff that gets kicked up on a daily basis, that these holes, if they were old, if they were ancient, created decades ago, hundreds of years ago, they would have been covered up by now. But these look sure. pretty fresh. They do. That's some fresh holes. Oh, I hit the <laughs> glory hole right here. I mean, you don't want these to be old holes. You need the fresh ones. You need the fresh ones. You, you need tight. You need uh, <laughs> to make sure that that they're ready for action. You don't need decrepit holes. <laughs> um, they go on to say, while they look almost human made, the little piles of sediment around the holes make them seem like they were excav excavated by something. Uh, the uh, July 23rd dive reached uh, the depths of 1.7 miles while visiting the summit of an underwater vo volcano. A remotely operated camera was used to safely record these discoveries. That's incredible. So they have no theories? I, they have to have theories at this point. It's, it's like perforated packaging. It's just where you tear the shred and, you know, fabric of the earth and time. If you go down to 1.7 miles, like you're basically crushed by the pressure. I would Is that assume. True? I, I, I don't know. I think so. I learned that from the abyss and the uh, 20,000 leagues under the, the sea, below the sea. I think if you just go, if you go down, I think like a thousand feet, it's an immense amount of pressure. I don't think you die from a thousand feet, but at one mile, I think you're, you're toast unless you have protection. Uh, it's pretty far down there, people. Record deepness, right? Yes. <laughs> Uh, scientists invited the public to offer theories, but commenters have raised more questions, including some who wonder if the holes were made by something taking core samples. Ah, oh, I got it. 702 maximum depth reached by anyone. Oh, that's in a single breath. What was that? What was the maximum? Like if you, if I held my breath, how far could I potentially go? This, this fella, 702 feet, 702 feet. Wow. That's pretty crazy. 213.9 wow. meters for our 
people and countries that actually understand why the metric system is superior. Yes. I don't understand this. I don't get it either, but okay. We'll go with it. <laughs> I, I guess we'll go with that thing. Um, all right. So they, uh, it, they, one commenter said it looked like it was these holes were made by something taking core samples. And I like that idea. Um, quote, uh, goes on to say, is that an object or an animal inside the holes? Does the, does that line run in the same direction as the current as someone else? Another question, water from underground springs. I don't know how that would happen. What about methane gas, one person said. What the fuck is that? <laughs> we don't know. Uh, the discovery was made as part of the Voyage to the Ridge 2022 expedition, which is exploring and mapping the poorly understood deep water areas off the Charlie Gibbs Fracture Zone. I love that place. Uh, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge stretches for 10,000 miles from north to south, and is considered the longest mountain range in the world and one of the most prominent geological features on Earth. So I, I, if, if we find it so fascinating, you'd imagine that whatever's visiting this Earth or whoever lives down there in the ocean, they're hanging out down there. They're doing things. We got to call the aquarium or something, dude. Okay, so I've, I've got it now. Okay. You can go miles underwater <clears throat> with gear. But gear, that's what I'm talking about. But it has got to be some pretty good gear. Like, not stuff I can just buy at Home Depot or Gander Mountain. Like, you got to get some <laughs> good gear. Like, top shelf James Cameron stuff. Yeah, you probably would need that. Unless you are one of those, like, water alien things. Hey, I put an article in there. This is from downtoscuba.com. Oh. I, it's better, I, I don't know. I like down to fuck dot com, but this is <laughs> down to school, whole different thing. <laughs> Human body. So here's the part that's important. How deep can you dive before being crushed? It says, um, or it asks. Human bone crushes at about uh, eleven thousand one hundred and fifty nine kilograms per square inch. Okay, this what mean, depth is that? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Well, that's that's a pressure measurement. Okay. Uh, that means we'd have to dive to about 35.5 kilometers depth okay. before bones begin to crush. Okay, okay. That's This uh, is three times the as deep as the deepest point in our ocean. These are some, I don't know, these are some like, those these scuba some, divers talk a big game here. Yeah, they, they certainly do. Uh, but going down that deep, I mean... You don't, you, you would die way before that. Even if I feel like you would. Yeah. Like it, we, we're talking about, uh, not just worrying about your bones crush, but your lungs collapsing and stuff like that. Even if you had protective gear, but apparently this stuff doesn't affect the aliens or, or the, the future humans that are living down there. So, um, down to scuba.com. They got all the news. Yep. I bet they got page. a YouTube channel. You know, I, I have seen YouTube channels and all they do is they talk about scuba. I mean, that's all they do. They talk about diving and scuba. And uh, so, dude, I, I, did you ever know anybody who did scuba diving? No. Well, it, if you do, it's like uh, vegans. Okay. That's all I talk about. That's, they can. I mean, they might as well wear their scuba gear to work. Yeah. It gets to be a little much. Yep. Like, it's like... <laughs> Like hanging out with a Jehovah's Witness, like Jesus Christ, dude. Like lay <laughs> off, lay off of it for. I, yeah, I, that's I, who I want to talk to you about, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. Well, I mean, take a look at that. We got uh, holes down there. They're talking about Loch Ness as a possibility. Loch Ness monster. I mean, it's all happening, people. We're gonna move on. We got some more headlines to get to. Oh, yes. You should play that drop when we go to, like, sad, depressing news. <laughs> okay. Let me, <laughs> give me a heads up. Like, give me, like, a little wink of the eye or finger in the air, and I'll see what I can do. Yeah. And uh, we'll, we'll see if we can do it. That is, that is a, a cheery jaunt, jaunt right into yeah. the, the news segment. I would say it's a jaunt. Okay. Uh, just some, some quick uh, paranormal headlines here. Because uh, I got to cover it. 
this comes from the drive.com. These, these guys always do an amazing job and uh, well-researched article. And this one uh, is uh, saying that Senate Intel Committee wants UAP investigators to focus on the ones that are not man-made. Oh, really? Okay. Well, and that's what we, we would all hope that they would be focusing on is the non-man-made UAPs. I thought that was the whole point of this thing. But apparently the Senate has to tell these people, no, just look at the non-man-made ones. Uh, a newly released Senate report criticizes the Pentagon's response to uh, what it says are exponentially growing threats posed from or by unidentified phenomena. So they're very upset. And by the way, Joe, this past week, Hashtag Skinwalker Ranch Skinwalker was tr trending on Twitter. Uh, and I realized like the, the season just ended and there's been a lot of talk about Skinwalker Ranch and uh, a lot of people are, are on board with it. But it seems like at this point, if it's trending on Twitter, they, the powers that be and whoever is, is injecting stuff into the Twitter algorithm, they want people to look at skinwalker ranch now like they want it to become part of the public consciousness Maybe. like now at, at this point i have to think that yeah they're investigating some interesting anomalies at skinwalker ranch but it could be just one big psychological operation mm, I've, I've, I've i've taken that position i I'm, I'm willing to entertain that uh what is currently going on there is a psyop I mean, yeah, plausible prime in the pump for the, uh, you know, COVID done mark. So let's do the alien thing now. Possibly. Aliens! Yeah, the, the, uh, I love this idea of the, it's like, no, no, no. We want the ones that aren't man made. Yeah. Stop it's, looking at the Chinese ones and look at the, the non man made ones. No, I, I want them the, like they're turning over video and footage and camera shots, you know, photographs of, of you know how this has happened a couple times, but people attach dildos to drones. <laughs> <laughs> we want to look at those ones. <laughs> no, they keep getting those, and they're like, "We don't want to see these." I know exactly what that is. We've seen the, we've seen the, the Putin dong uh, drone video. <laughs> give us more. Give us more of the other alien ones. <laughs> you, you remember that one when uh, there's like Putin was giving a speech, and someone flew a drone, and there was a dildo attached to it. That's what I'm saying. There's yeah, really a couple of uh, I think it's happened a couple of times. Yeah, that's a great one. I kind of want to get a drone and a dildo just to do this. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's stability issues and you have to balance it correctly, but yeah. uh, I think you can get it done. I think we have the technology to do that. For sure. I'll read a little bit of this here. So members of the U.S. Senate are criticizing the Pentagon's slow progress in setting up a new organization and reporting mechanisms, among other things, to address what they claim are exponentially growing threats presented by unidentified aerospace and undersea phenomena. Those same legislatures will also want the U.S. military-led office now charged with investigating and studying these phenomena to focus on truly unexplained incidents rather than the ones they have been determined uh, to be man-made systems. Uh, these comments were included in a report that Senator Mark Warner of Virginia, he's a Virginia Democrat, who is the current chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, submitted on behalf of the committee on July 20th. Okay, so they, they, there's like a, a big report here. They're saying, hey, quit jerking us around, Pentagon, and get to work and give us some interesting alien stuff. And it's, it's a quite lengthy article. I'll post this. Uh, so uh, it goes on to say, we're all open to, we're open to all hypothesis. Ronald Mortry, Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence and Security, said, uh, had, and he had assured members of the House Intelligence Committee uh, during a hearing about unidentified era phenomena or UAPs back in May. We're open to any conclusion that we may encounter. Okay, so it sounds like they're not open to anything. If they have to continually say that, but uh, we'll, we'll find out. But uh, just to wrap things up here, like the, the last two paragraphs, uh, the Senate's draft, draft, the IAA, would also require the GAO, I think it's the General Accounting's Office, 
to conduct a, a, similar, a similar thoroughly historical review of unidentified phenomena records classified and unclassified from within the intelligence community, but makes no specific mention of any potential recovery of non-man-made technology and does not allude to the possibility of intelligence community efforts to hide any relevant activities. So it sounds like they gave him an out. Uh, no matter what, it is important to remember that there are still many steps. Uh, the Intelligence Authorization Act of 2023 fiscal year still has to go through uh, both in the Senate and the House of Represent Representatives before it can be sent to President Joe Biden, who will then decide whether or not to sign it into law. The will he, though? Will he decide this? Someone's doing something. Someone's so going to decide something. Someone's holding his pen for him. That's all I know. Come on, man. He's got COVID. He can't do anything. Not a joke. And cancer. Mm hmm So who knows what's going to happen here? Uh, it sounds like the, the Senate's passively upset, but they gave it out. And they also, they aren't talking about the intelligence communities. You, you got to know, you have to assume at this point, the CIA has got to know a hell of a lot at this point. The FBI knows more than what they're letting on. The Pentagon knows way more than they're letting on. So does NASA. We've had so many different whistleblowers come forth and say they, they got the stuff. They have documents. They've done this research. There are probably reams and reams of video and film at this point that they have chosen not to share with the American people, the Senate and the, and the House of Representatives, because uh, they only want to focus on 2003 and up to current. They don't want to go back to the past. So something stinks here. Something stinks real Give bad. Give us an email at ourbigdumbmouth at gmail.com. Check out obdmpod.com for all the social media and donation links. Be a part of the magic.